Hello, my name is Thomas Simpson. I'm a PhD student at Chile University, and my research is looking at optimising children's motor learning uh, through the application of the optimal motor learning theory. Okay, so just to introduce the optimal theory of motor learning. Optimal as an acronym stands for optimising performance through intrinsic motivation and attention for learning. It accounts for the social cognitive affective motor nature of motor learning and contends that there are two motivational and one attentional factors that when combined optimise goal action coupling to improve motor performance and motor learning. Specifically, the optimal theory contends that autonomy support, providing learner the opportunity to make choices during practice, enhanced expectancies, so that's enhancing experience of success so that a learner will likely experience success in future practice or future performance, and finally, the third factor, an external focus of attention, is a focus on the intended movement outcome or the intended movement effect. So the overarching aim of my PhD was to see how we can use the optimal theory to enhance children's motor learning. To get an idea of the research out there, I did a systematic review, looking at how each of the three variables, an external focus of attention, enhanced expectancies and autonomy support, or some combination of those three, uh, impacted uh, children's fundamental movement skills, that is object manipulation, locomotion and stability skills. So 55 studies were included in this review of school aged children and generally the results were supportive of optimal factors, that is external focus of attention, enhanced expectancies and autonomy support are key motivational attention factors in children's performance and learning. Um, of the studies included in the review, the majority looked at attentional focus factors such as an external focus of attention relative to an internal focus of attention or no specific focus. Uh, so less studies were done looking at an ex uh, enhanced expectancies and autonomy support. Uh, moreover, there was a, a skewness towards object manipulation skills with all studies um, included in the review. Um, as you may have noticed, there was 14 studies unsupportive of, of the use of an external focus of attention. However, there's numerous uh, confounding issues regards to how an external focus of attention was promoted or instructed in those studies. Uh, across all studies, uh, across all optimal factors, there are several developmental considerations that need to be accounted for before application in practical and applied settings. Okay, so the first experimental study in PhD was a test of optimal theory using a standard long jump task. In this test, there was four conditions, baseline and three optimal conditions. In the three optimal conditions, an external focus of attention was promoted uh, using a cone. In the EF condition, that cone was placed at the end of the jump mat. To enhance expectancies, the cone was placed in an easily attainable position and the children provided positive social comparative feedback after jumping past the cone. And in the AS condition, 
autonomy was provided by giving the child the cone and telling them to place the cone in a position that they, they could feel that they could jump past. So we're in an attainable position. Um, in each of the three optimal conditions, perceived competence, self-efficacy, positive effect, and task effort improved relative to baseline. However, in terms of performance, the EF and ASEF conditions improved relative to baseline, so jump performance was further. However, there was no performance differences between baseline and the EEF condition. Moreover, there was a significant difference between the external focus of attention and the enhanced expectancies condition. So this actually suggests that even our attempts to improve motivation by making the task easier, this actually may have disrupted the optimal attentional focus for the task and for that individual. So that is our opportunity, so that is our attempts to improve motivation, uh, improve performance through motivational uh, interventions, it may have actually disrupted option, optimal attentional mechanisms. This is further supported by the data from the ASEF condition, as you can see in the figure on the bottom right, that children actually place the cone further with each uh, successively with each jump and performance successively improved with each jump. So this suggests that by placing the cone at a position they felt that they could achieve, it may have promoted an optimal attentional focus for that individual. So why are, the, why are these findings are partially supportive uh, of the optimal theory, the take home message here is that motivational interventions, that is to enhance expectancies, may actually disrupt optimal attentional mechanisms, that is an external focus. Okay, so just to finish, I just want to tell you about some ongoing research as part of my PhD. So one study we're looking at using optimal factors in, uh, in a combined way to improve children's performance on uh, movement assessment, so that is optimizing movement assessments. Specifically, we're looking at the Dragon Challenge. So children perform the Dragon Challenge under uh, a standardized condition and an optimized condition where we've provided autonomy support, enhanced expectancies, and promoted an external focus of attention. Uh, the data so far suggests positive trends in a supportive optimal theory, as you can see from the figure on the left. Uh, a second study that's ongoing is analysis of instructions and feedback in PE settings. This is where we put microphones onto PE teachers uh, while we're teaching a PE lesson, and we're going to analyse the statements that we give uh, from an optimal theory perspective. Uh, thank you for listening. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please feel free to let me know. Thank you for listening.